So this is like the third time I've recorded this because it's so hard to record. Ha! Um, anyway, my story with depression. Um, I had I was diagnosed with depression roughly when I was about nine years old. So and I'm eighteen now, so it's a full nine years I've been you know going through this process and. I kind of want to share my story with you guys a little bit because I don't know I feel like it's something that isn't talked about enough and it happens to so many people out there it is insane and I feel like as a teenager as somebody that wants to speak out about it as somebody that wants to help people I feel like I have a duty to help people so I'm going to I'm going to try or at least I'm going to share something that might help you or benefit you in a way I hope it does um so yeah so I was nine years old and I just we don't know how it hit me, we don't know why it hit me, but depression hit me, it hit me like a ton of bricks, it hit my family like a ton of bricks as well, you know, I would go into like manic tantrums, I would have to stay at home, I, we couldn't go on, my depression was so bad that we even think it could have possibly been a bit of bipolar, we, we don't even really know to be honest, but it was bad to the point where I was, I had tantrums and things when I was nine, and a lot of nine year olds, when I was nine, weren't like that. In fact, a lot of nine-year-olds aren't like that. A lot of nine-year-olds will might might yell at their mum and say, you know, and say they're mean, but they not they won't have a tantrum like I did. And that was kind of the first sign that I had high anxiety and that I had depression and things like that. So my parents were really good. My parents have always been really good about it. You know, they got me into counselling and into psychology straight away. Um. And I was with them for a year, and then, you know, it sorted itself out. It all quietened down after I'd, after I'd been going through therapy of how to sort it out in different ways. I could, you know, sort myself out if I need to, um, and just, you know, help to calm myself down. And it stopped, and it was great, and it was all like blue skies and sunny, and then, you know, so that was that year. And then as soon, like, just, just after I turned 11, it hit me again. Um, and that was after about a year break and we thought we'd had a breakthrough, we thought it wasn't there, but it was. And at the time I was an intermediate, so i just finished primary school, was going in intermediate and then after that I would have been going into high school. And I mean, I didn't even realise it was hitting me, luckily my parents caught the signs, you know, I had OCD, I had anxiety. I had to do everything certain ways like you do when you have OCD. Um, I was very, very quiet and very anxious a lot about really stupid things. Well, they're not stupid, but looking back on them, I think they're kind of silly that I probably shouldn't have even been worrying about. Like, I can't even remember now, but I knew, do know it was something like that. So, again, I had therapy classes. I had a therapist or, like, I don't know, I don't know a counsellor that came to school that used to talk to me to help me keep it on track, that used to help me out with it. I saw somebody after school, outside of school. And, you know, it was, all, it was, it was going all right. Like, it wasn't too bad. And then year eight to year nine, because I was transitioning from intermediate to high school, it really hit me. It hit me and my family like never before. It was like a tornado that wouldn't stop. And it didn't stop till I was like year 11 or something like that. It was quite bad. It was vicious, guys. Um, I had a counsellor coming to see me at school, I had counsellors at school that I would go and see. I usually wouldn't go a week without bursting into tears at one point. I was getting bullied at high school as well in year nine, so that probably didn't help, especially because I had because I've had I had high anxiety. That probably didn't help either. I wasn't sleeping and because of that and because when I get tired I turn into just a bear. I just get really scary and really just I just I turned into just an angry little bear and it's never ever fun. So my parents are having to try and deal with that as well as my twin because I've got a twin sister um, and you know family and stuff like that and they were and I don't know how they did it to be honest. I was a mess. I caused so many like there were times where my mum would literally have to like stop me from going out with my friends because I was that bad or stop me from going out and doing an extra curricular activity like I used to go and sail because I was because I needed to be under more control than that. And that's, I'm not afraid to say this because it's all things that happened. I'm not going to go into too many details because some of it is kind of like private. But at the same time, it's all things that happened and it's all due to depression. I had OCD so bad that I had to have my parents come in and shut my curtains. That's not normal for someone that's like 13, 12 years, 12, 13. 
I had to have a nightlight and everything. I'm not going to lie. Like, I went through a lot of this and it was horrible and... I mean, back then I hated, I did not like the people, I didn't like my therapist, I didn't like my psychologist, but looking back, they did everything they could. Um, so after, like, I don't know, in year 10, that, that's when they, that's when we started trying medications and things like that out, because it turns out I do have, like, a chemical deficiency or something like that in my brain that is probably caused by cerebral palsy, but we're not 110% sure yet. Um, and yeah, so I... We tried that, and that was fine. I, you know, I was getting a little bit fatigued, but it was, it was fine. Like, <laughs> that, um, that definitely gave my parents a little bit of a break for a bit. And then, you know, I said I was having suicidal thoughts and things like that. And so we tried a different one. And again, suicidal thoughts, self-harming thoughts like that. And so I, I changed into the one that I'm currently on now, and that I've been on for, like, ages. Um, and I'm not a druggie. I've just, again... It's due to chemical misplacement, whatever it is in my brain. It helps me. I mean, I'm I'm fine. I mean, I'm a lovely person. Like, I'm a nice person. I mean, I think I am. My parents think I am. My friends think I am. It's just I can get a little bit oversensitive and a little bit overanxious. And sometimes this just help. I'm not going to lie. They they help. Um, and they have helped me and my family tremendously. And I want a tiny dosage. And you know what? I'm fine with it. Like, I'll learn to deal with it someday, but for the moment, as I'm going through a lot of changes and a lot of anxious changes, I'm, I know myself well enough now to know that I want to stay on them because I want just to, like, I'll, in the future, guys, I'll be fine without these. It's just, as I'm going through so many changes now with moving to England with college and everything, I know myself that I don't necessarily want to try coming off these just yet. And that's a personal trait. It's not the doctor saying, no, you're not allowed to come off those. They're turning, you know, without those, you're a monster. Because it's not like that at all. It's a personal decision. The doctors actually think I could come off these straight away. Um, but, again, it's my decision. And, again, it's also a decision that I'm making for my family because my parents are under a lot of stress as well with moving and everything. And, yeah. Anyway... <laughs> So I've been on those since roughly year 11, year 12, year, oh, year 11, year 10, year 11, so that's what, three, four years, three, four years, maybe, I don't know, but that's that, um, they've helped me a lot, you know, I haven't, I stopped, I was discharged from psychology and counselling in year 10, I think it was year 10, or was it year 11? No, it was year 10. I was discharged in year 10, I think. Or at, either at the end of year 10 or the beginning of year 11, I was discharged from psychology and counselling, which was good. And I haven't been back ever since. I've been doing really well. I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of my family. I've overcome depression. It's something that I still, every now and then, sometimes I crash and burn a little bit. And I'm still at home. I just do it in my bedroom. I just crash and burn. And then within like an hour of crying and letting it all out, I'm fine. You know, I'm so thankful to my parents, to my counsellors, to my psychologists over the years, to my friends who have supported me, to my to my boyfriend who has supported me. I've <laughs> and Louis, if you're watching this, I love you. I love you more than anything. Thank you for everything. Um, and to my parents for actually supporting me through this journey. Like depression, guys, it's not a disease. You cannot catch it. It's a mental illness. It's a hard mental illness to deal with. But just because someone has depression does not mean they're a monster. It does not mean they're different. It just means that they have something extra to deal with. And that's fine. Because there's a lot of help out there. And there always will be. And my cat just came in. There's a lot of help out there. There's a lot of therapy. My advice is if you have depression, talk to someone about it. Because everyone says that. But I really do say it. I really, when I say it, I mean talk to someone about it. Talk to a trusted adult, to a trusted friend about it. Because it really does help. Talking helps a lot. Phone a kid's line. Phone a, phone a helpline about it. Another thing that helped me is finding something that I love. I love cooking. I love sports. And I love music. And those are all those three things together are things that really have helped me through. I've, I, you know, now when I get into a bit of a depressive mount, I put music on and I start dancing. Because it helps me. Or I go and bake. Or I listen to my favourite songs on my phone. Just find something that you love because that really will help. 
and find someone to talk to because that will save you um and like i'm always here so i never ever be scared to reach out because there's so 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 many people going through it there's so 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 many people going through it you just you don't really know no one really knows and don't be afraid to ever just don't be afraid to reach out like just reach out because people are here people are people and it's important that we all work together as humans and as people to really help knock depression on the head and get it out there because it's not fun and I know the struggles and 